Hey guys, I'd just like to apologize in advance. The audio you're about to hear was recorded on my iPad. So it's gonna sound like complete shit. Nothing I can do about it, can't improve it. It's grainy, it sounds bad. My voice sounds weird. I sound like a little goblin. It's fine. The second half of the video is filmed on the iPhone, so you'll be okay. I promise you, and there's a lot of good content in here, so keep watching. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back. Time for another Not Snooze video. I know that if that's the content you come here for, you might be a little bit disappointed, but this should be uploading just a couple hours before one that I think is pretty in-depth. Very useful, not just to people who like and use Snooze, but everybody who's interested in tobacco in general. But recently, I've become fascinated with these uh, fire-cured Italian cigars. It's a traditional product of Italy, especially Tuscany. Um, and the largest and oldest producer of these fire-cured Italian cigars is, in fact, the Toscano Company. What differentiates a Italian-style cigar from a something people might recognize more, something like a Cuban-style just a traditional long filler cigar. Um, number one is the type of leaf used. Now I do like cigars and I do smoke them. Here is one of my favorites. It's the New World Cameroon by AJ Fernandez. But they're not the only type of cigar you can smoke and they're not the only tobacco that you can make a cigar out of. So if you're not familiar with the principle of cigars, they are made of tobacco that is air cured and then fermented and they ferment the tobacco in these big bales and pressure and heat and humidity push down on the stack of tobacco and cause them to ferment further. After that they're separated, they are graded, and they are aged. Usually for a couple of years though some cheaper tobaccos will be used as soon as the ammonia comes off of them because the baling process as it's called does produce a lot of ammonia gas, but that's how your normal, I guess, cigar chomper, South American Cuban cigar is made. With Italian cigars, it's a little bit different. With Toscanos, at least, I know that they use either exclusively fire-cured Kentucky in their cigars or predominantly fire-cured Kentucky in their cigars, but the most common archetypal image of the cigar is one that's entirely made of fire cured leaf and that is fire cured Kentucky. Now fire cured Kentucky just refers to the cultivar of leaf which is Kentucky and the type of curing which is fire curing. This tobacco can be produced anywhere and Italy is the producer for the majority of the fire cured Kentucky leaf inside their Toscano cigars. It's domestically used. They don't import it from Kentucky. They don't import it from America, at least in most cases. So, this brings me to why I even started this project in the first place, why I'm even researching this. I haven't smoked a Toscano in the past, but I do know what they're made of, and the company website gives me a great deal of information as to how they're made. So, I'll post some pictures up online. I'll try to keep away from the stuff that they have on their website for copyright reasons, but the cigar is fire cured. The cigar is then wetted and it's, it's pretty soaked, it's pretty soppy after they're done with it. The legend goes that they had a big bunch of Kentucky fire cured leaf that was sitting around and heavy rainfall soaked the entire batch. So the choice was made to either get rid of the leaf or roll it up into very cheap cigars. I don't know how much of that is true. It's pretty recent history, and Italy has been pretty good about taking records of manufacturing processes when it comes to tobacco, so I have no reason but to believe it. It's very credible um, based on my own experience, and we'll get to that shortly. The leaf is wetted, and while it's still wet, they soak it for a couple of days. I haven't smoked what I've made or I haven't soaked what I've made for so long, but I've 
I've really tried to get the water pretty deep inside the leaf before I rolled the cigar. And then I rolled the cigar. I had a bunch of scrap Kentucky Burley that I wasn't going to use. If you want to see how I did use most of it, you can check out the dip making video or the nasal snuff video. The quick method, not the age method that uses Lennon, Virginia. But I had a bunch of this leaf and I decided that it would be a cool project to try and roll my first cigars. The Toscano cigars are well known for being very ugly. I think the shape is charming. I, with, yes, there is something very visually pleasing about the box pressed or the molded hand rolled cigars and you have these old masters who are very good at getting the lines clean and the edges very straight and ooh, look at that, the cap is on and it looks beautiful. But I think that the form of the Toscano cigar where it's, it's bigger in the middle, it's, it's really raggedy at the edges, there's no cap on either end. There's something very pleasing about that shape. It's, it's very wabi-sabi. So I didn't feel too bad about making <laughs> very ugly cigars for my first cigar. So this is what I ended up with. I rolled the cigar as best I could. I think I did pretty well. Fire cured Kentucky, especially since I was using scrap leaf. It's very knobbly, it's very veiny, it's very wrinkly. And I made three cigars. One of the cigars I actually cut in half because the custom in Italy, when you're smoking a Toscano, is to cut it down the middle. But I'll post a picture of this too. This cigar was actually the most true to form that I rolled. You can see that it actually gets larger in the center there. The shape on a lot of cigar websites is called double perfecto, but a double perfecto isn't exactly what this is. I think this is just the shape of a Tuscan cigar. So, I'm gonna give you the cross profile. The tobacco is very, very dark. I let these dry out completely, but by putting them in a the dehydrator, I ended up with a cigar that's very, very dry, rock hard, which is the way a Tuscan cigar should be. It's not meant to be a cigar that's smoked or stored humid, supposed to be stored dry. And I think I did pretty darn well. I'll give you the cross section and I'll put photos up of the cuts online. The only thing I'm not too happy with is on some of these cigars, and I'll try to give you an image. If it's looking a little bit blurry or compacted there, that's not the camera, that's the cigar. And my hope is that this will kind of open up, that that's just uh, oil from the tobacco that's accumulated on the surface because it's been squeezed and then has settled there. But if it's not, then it's not. Another thing too is that these are not made with uh, Ligero Center, so the burn can be kind of a, li a little bit irregular on these. And because there is no moister, slower burning leaf in the center, that irregularity becomes more pronounced as the cigar is smoked. A regular Toscano is pretty thin. These are kind of thick, a little bit past Corona. As far as cigars go, that's not too thick, but um, it's thicker than a Toscano should be, just because of my own, you know, not knowing how to roll a cigar-ishness. But besides that, I think I did pretty well. The best rolled cigar is by far this one. It has open leaf at both sides. The dry draw is perfect. On these, I can also dry draw, so that little plug that I was talking about hasn't completely sealed off the cigar, but I'm concerned about the way that it's going to smoke because there could be little frizzers inside the, uh, the tobacco itself that are allowing me to pass air or the wrapper could be wrapped on very poorly and air could be getting in and I could be drawing air in through a crack in the side. But I don't think that's the case. And I intentionally rolled these very, very well with as much leaf as I could stomach because I don't want any, any air getting in through the sides. With this type of leaf, because it is so knobbly, there is a good chance that there are gaps 
in the sides of the cigar that air could get into, and because there's no binder leaf, a hallmark of the Toscano, air could very easily get into the inside if you're not careful. So I'm gonna take this outside and I'll give it a first smoke. By the way, the smell is fire cured tobacco. If you've never smelled that, it's a little bit smoky. It's a little bit sweet in the way that uh, molasses is sweet, not in the way that fruits are sweet. There's no sour sharpness to the smell. There's a little bit of honey along with it. I like them. The dry draw is the same. It's tobacco, it's smoked meat, it's a little bit sweet. If you've ever had a scotch snuff, so one of the American scorched snuffs, those are made with fire cured leaf, I believe, and the smell in the nose off of that is like the dry draw off of these, but in the snuff, of course, since you're sticking it into your nose, it's a little bit more pronounced. These are milder. Show off some more of the sweetness. I wanted to get some footage of me smoking the Toscano I made. Unfortunately, earlier today in the afternoon when I went out to do that, the neighbors were uh, in the backyard smacking fucking pots and pans together. So, I saved you the ear pain and figured that I would smoke it, enjoy it, take notes at my leisure, and then report back to you. Now, keep in mind that my Toscano was the first Toscano that I had ever smoked, so I figured it would be worthwhile to uh, go to the store and pick up the real thing to smoke afterwards, compare notes, and see how close I got on rolling my own, as far as the flavor goes, the draw, the experience. So, I smoked one of my halves and found out that not only was the cigar not dry yet, right? So it does feel very firm compared to a Caribbean cigar, but compared to a genuine Toscano, I've come to find it's actually very soft, very pliant, still got a lot of plushness to it. And there is some moisture still inside the cigar. So if you remember from earlier in the video, I talked about how there were some denser spots inside the cigar that I wasn't sure that air would pass into. And it turns out I was completely correct. Air did not pass into there. I had unbelievable trouble getting it lit, keeping it lit. Um, the cigar would only stay lit in the, you know, cracks, the major cracks where fire could get into, actually penetrate. So I discarded that cigar, called it a loss, that's fine. It was an experiment that I wasn't sure was going to work anyways. So I tried the other cigar. This is the capped one. I smoked the uncapped one that I was most proud of because I figured if I was going to get anything from this, I may as well smoke the nicest one and take notes on that one rather than ones that I'm not sure are going to smoke properly. So on the first light, it's a lot more mild of a cigar than you might expect. Um, with a Caribbean cigar, there's a lot going on from the get-go, right? Uh, usually you taste the wrapper first. I smoke a lot of cigars that just happen to have the wrapper curled over the foot as a decorative thing, but it also lets you taste the wrapper alone on the first light. So you get some of the bitterness from it. If it's a Connecticut, you get uh, some of the hay, some of the grassier, lighter notes from it. Sort of like taking a shot before you drink your wine. But on this, I found that it was very, very far away. All of the tastes in this were a lot more mild than in a Caribbean cigar. The tastes that were there, though, were very good. Um, I'll be upfront and say that even though I did enjoy the cigar, and even though I did enjoy the genuine Toscano that I had, I'm not sure that I would buy these again. The flavor profile in Caribbean cigars and in other tobacco, like snooze or snuff, they just offer a lot more for me. Maybe as an occasional treat or novelty, I might get these again, but it's not something that I'm so into. I think it's really something that you have to grow up with, something that is uniquely Italian 
for better or for worse. Upon initial light up, I get the taste of hot moisture, which I thought was because my cigar was too moist, and it definitely was. But when I smoked the real Toscano, I got a lot of the same taste. And in fact, this is a Toscano Classico, by the way. I cut it in half because these are notorious for being very long smokes, and I smoked one on the way to the gym. But I also got a deal on these Toscano Stilo Novo. And these were very good too. In fact, a better cigar than the Toscano Classico. Maybe not better than mine. No get to why. Right, so mild taste, hot moisture, which it's a taste like um like steam. If you opened a pot of boiling water and held your mouth open over it. That's kind of the sensation you're getting. And this is a very dry cigar. I mean, hard as a number two pencil. And that's not just the wrapper. That's the filler, too. You can hear how it... It's just so dense, and the wrapper is so thick, too. It tastes kind of like pipe tobacco. Some t pipe tobacco blends that I've had. And not just the ones that include uh, fire-cured leaf. There are other blends that I enjoy, like Burley's, and this doesn't lean towards Virginia's, but it does share some qualities with pipe tobacco in general that cigars don't have. The mildness. The retrohale on this was very, very smooth, too. Even with a mouth full of smoke, I was able to retrohale as I would from a cigarette. The whole thing just out the nose, without any burn or unpleasantness to it at all. Kind of astonishing if you're coming from um, Caribbean cigars that's something you just can't do it's going to uh, fill your sinuses and really give you a peppery sting make you not want to do it again pipe tobacco there was a little bit of honey far away clover honey taste floral honey on the finish with mine that I didn't get from the regular Toscano um there's a little bit of a sweetness, like molasses. I didn't get much smoky flavor. It's a little bit weird to say that, considering this is fire-cured leaf, and if you've smelled that, or smelled the products that it's made with, um, smoke and smoky flavors are what this stuff smells like. But when you actually smoke it as a tobacco on its own, all of that kind of disappears. There's maybe a similarity with Latakia, but it's nowhere near as strong or, or, uh, or how do I put this, acrid, but in a good way like Latakia can be. So, pipe tobacco, hot moisture, some sweetness, clover honey in mine, none in the class, or none in the Toscano. There's something reminiscent of old campfire in this. So, you're going camping. The morning after, the f fire is kind of dewy with the morning moisture. It's kind of what's going on with this. And it's a very subtle taste. It's in the very, very end of the finish. It's very light. If you retrohale, you can actually get more of it. But again, it's on the finish. And there's not a lot of body to this. A lot of the tastes, or the tastes that I've described, they're on the finish. When you're smoking it itself, there's not a lot going on. It's the most incredible thing to smoke a cigar, not taste anything, until a couple seconds after you take a puff. What else do I have to say about it? I'll tell you this. I like my cigar better than I like the Toscano itself. I really, really do, and I do mean it. I think mine is a better example of what Fire Cured Leaf has to offer when it's smoked compared to the regular, um, traditional Tuscan cigar. I think a lot of that has to do with how the tobacco has been treated in this case. So mine still has a little bit of moisture, and, well, let's call it what it is. Mine has a lot of moisture, but I think some moisture is good in this case. It's not going to lose all of its flavor if it's bone dry, which is a lot of the appeal of these. People will put them in their cars, put them in their backpacks, their briefcases, 
to always have a cigar because these don't go bad if they aren't humidified and are really supposed to be smoked dry like this. But I think a little bit of moisture helps carry some flavor and open up some flavor. On top of that, these are made with aged, fermented, fire-cured leaf. Mine, or I should say, the cigar that I've made is made with a greener fire-cured leaf, if that makes any sense. It's been fire-cured, and it's been sitting in my house and doing nothing. It hasn't been prepared for fermentation. Maybe it's aged a little bit, but fire-cured leaf doesn't really age in the same way that Burley or Virginia does. It's just been sitting. And I think those sorts of livelier flavors, those fruitier flavors, there's a little bit of honey in this, like I said, clover honey. There's a little bit of a floral thing going on, especially in the first half of the cigar that I had. And especially on the retro hill, I don't get any of that at all from this. I get a little bit of it from the Stilo Novo. A very small amount of it. It's vague fruit. It's not citrus. It's not anything like that. It's a faraway fruit. It's not the same floral clover honey taste that I get on the retro hail for mine either. It's something different. I do like this cigar, but I don't know that I can be so shrewd of a judge only having smoked literally one half of it. So that's it. Um, I liked it. I liked the procedure. I may not buy Toscanos again. I think with a little bit of improved technique, I can roll ones that are just as good. And I'd like to say something too. I'm pretty happy about the way that my wrappers turned out. These are some really craggly cigars. They've got a lot of tooth to them, and the Stilo Novos are actually supposed to be a better example of a wrapper, because they are made with a wrapper and binder rather than just a wrapper. But they are really, really rough cigars. And mine, you know, maybe being bigger, it doesn't display so many of the positive qualities of this. But I think mine actually may look better in some places than the Toscano. But as a Toscano shows, looks aren't everything. It's what's inside that counts. Pretty good. Pretty fun. Pretty good smoke. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations for the future, be sure to let them in the comment section. I'll be sure to read them and answer as soon as I get the chance. I have a lot of good stuff coming up. This is going to be the end of the, uh, I guess, weird tangential videos for the time being. We're going to go right back to snooze making content, and I've got a lot of good ideas for that planned. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.